Praise God. We're so happy to see everybody this morning. Praise God. And Milton, thank God he's, he's okay. And Amen. Is that the first time you ever rode in a paramedic? First time, man. I want to be the last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't like to see the paramedic come down our streets there and pick up some of our people in the neighborhood. So Milton had to ride in the, in the ambulance, huh? Couldn't ride with him. Okay, well, praise God. You, you've been riding with him for a long time, so don't worry about that. <laughs> but we, we thank God for Jesus. Amen. Thank God for, praise God, just keeping us and praise God, watching over us this week. It's just a blessing. And, and we got, a, we got, a, we got a, a guy here this morning that uh, he caught his first fish this past week. He's, a, he's an expert fisherman now. His name is Ethan. There he is back there. Old fisherman back there. I know that was exciting. Praise God. I hope he was able to take it off the hook. Uh, the daddy had to help him off the hook. He ain't got that, he ain't got that for yet. Okay. Okay. Well, praise God. We thank God. It's exciting, though, uh, uh, to have uh, a dad, a family to take you fishing. A lot of, a lot of us didn't have that, uh, brother. We. We never had that opportunity. The guys ask me all the time, have you ever been fishing? I said, nope. Have you ever been hunting? I said, nope. <laughs> Neither one of them. I hunt, I hunt, I fish at Captain D's and I, and I hunt, and I hunt in the, at the supermarket, y'all. <laughs> Praise God. Everybody, you need a Bible this morning. Book of Jonah this morning. Praise God. We just thank God for this opportunity. We thank God for, praise God, for just keeping us this week. It is definitely uh, a blessing to be here. Amen? Amen. Book of Jonah. We're going to look at the third uh, chapter there, third chapter of the book of Jonah. And uh, we're going to just look at one verse right now. We'll look at a few more as we go along. But right now, we just want to look at one verse. And that's verse number nine there. Verse number nine, the book of Jonah. Amen. Praise God. And to read, who can tell? Do we have it? Are we together? Who can tell, who perhaps, who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? Let's read that one more time. Who can tell? Perhaps God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not. That's the voice of the great uh, uh, king of Nineveh. Amen? Amen. Now go Hosea 6. I want to put one more with that. One more with that. With that. Hosea 6. Let's look at Hosea 6 there. And uh, praise God. We'll look at verse 1 there. Verse 1. We're going to take our subject from that verse 1 there of Hosea chapter number 6. And it read thusly, Come, let us return mm -hmm. unto the Lord. For he has torn and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. Let us pray. Father, we bless you today. Lord, we thank you for this another opportunity, Lord, just to be able to sit in your presence today and Lord, to look into the treasures of your word here today. Lord God, we pray your anointing might be in our midst today and Lord, that you might speak directly to our hearts. Let your anointing be upon not only the speaker today, but let your anointing be upon every ear that hears your word today. Father God, that clarity might go forth and then your word will not return void. And Lord God, we'll be so mindful to give you all the praise, all the glory. In Jesus name we pray. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Verse six, we're going to take our thought there from those first words we see there. Come, let us return unto the Lord. That's our subject. Let us return. Let us return unto the Lord. And the statement was made by Milton a while ago. We are so far away. Uh, this nation and this people, even church people will have drifted so far away from the Lord. Praise God. And uh, the, the, the admonition and the encouragement he has come, let us return unto the Lord. He has torn, yes, the problems that we have today, uh, they may not be directly from God, but he allows them because all things going to work together for the good. 
of them that love God. But God, he says he has torn, but he can heal us, though. Praise God. He's the only healer. Yes, he can. Can't nobody heal us like the Lord. Amen. It says he has smitten us and he will bind us up. But we have to return unto the Lord. Amen. And this is Communion Sunday, and we want to look at our hearts and lives very carefully today because we all, to some degree or another, we're not where we ought to be. Amen. And we do need to return unto the Lord. We need to come back in fellowship with our God. We need to spend more time with the Lord. Uh, once a week ain't going to cut it. Amen. Amen. On Sunday, just on Sunday, you're picking up your Bible, they're not going to cut it. Amen. Praise God. We need to spend more time uh, with the Lord. Now, in the book of Jonah there, we read just that one, uh, that ninth verse there. And the question, uh, the question there is asked by the king of Nineveh. He's the king. He's the king. He's part of the Assyrian uh, army, Assyrian nation. And he says here, who can tell? Perhaps, maybe, maybe God will turn and repent hmm? and turn away his fierce anger from us that we perish not. Now, we all know the story. Tony's kind of alluded to it a little bit there. I thought he was going to preach it a little bit this morning, but he didn't go too deep into it. Amen. <laughs> but we all know the story of Jonah. Amen. 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 Jonah was God's prophet. Mm -hmm. Jonah was God's man and, and God gave him an assignment. Uh, uh, to go to a, a heathen country, heathen people that uh, evidently Jonah didn't care nothing about. Israel didn't care nothing about them. But uh, that's the thing about our God, though. Our God loves all of his creation. All of us. God loves each and every one of us. And he wants us to come into the light, to come into the knowledge of who he is. He wants to fellowship with every one of us. So now he sent Jonah out on a Praise God, a mission, very simple mission, Jonah. Just go tell these people that I'm fed up with them. I'm fed up. I'm fed up. I'm fed up with the sin that I, you know, the aroma is bad. It all reached to heaven by now. It stinks. Your country stinks. So, Jonah, go, go tell them. Go tell them that uh, they're going to have to get right. Uh, I give them 40 days and I'm going to I'm, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to take them out. I'm going to destroy them now. Jonah had other ideas. He, like I say, he didn't like the Ninevites. He didn't like them and he didn't want to go. So God told him to go this way. God saw a jihaw and he jihoed. <laughs> God told him to go this way and he decided to take him a, a trip. Huh? Because now we don't know the story. Ain't going to go into all of that. God interrupted him and, and sent him a, a limousine to pick him up. Yeah, after they threw him in the water, the limousine picked him up and he had a first class seat in a whale's belly. Hmm? And that whale, I mean, it's amazing how everything obey God but us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God can speak to a fish yes, sir. and give him the longitude, latitude, yes, sir. tell him where to go and to pick him up. And because they're going to throw him overboard. Hmm? I already fixed that. They're going to throw him overboard. I want you to pick him up. Yes. And take him to his destination. Give him a first class seat. Don't put him in coach. Put him in first class. <laughs> and take him to where he's supposed to go. Huh? And the fish did that. Took him right to the shore uh, of Nineveh and, and spit him out. And old boy went running. After he got to clean himself up, he was on his way. Amen? He went on into the town there. And, uh, but now look at Jonah 1. Uh, uh, Nineveh was a wicked city. It ain't no dip doubt about that. It was a wicked city. Uh, one, that first chapter in that second verse, the Lord said to Jonah, arise, go to Nineveh. Y'all see that? That great city. It was a great city. It was a big city, very populated city. I think in one place I read that uh, the children numbered 120,000. Now, you, if that, that's just children now. Huh? So, you know, the big city. I, I imagine Nineveh was uh, what uh, Atlanta is to the south. You know, big city, big city. It was a big city, and there was a lot of sin going on in that city. Look what it says there. Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. Is that what God says? Huh? For their wickedness is come up before me. 
Hmm? God said, I've had enough. You know, and that's the sad part about it. A lot of us, we're close to God having enough. God is tired of a lot of the mess a lot of us are involved in. And we are very close. And a lot of us, we are very close to God moving in a mighty way in our lives. And it's not going to be nice either. Praise God. America is on the threshold. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm? This country is, oh God, they're pushing God. They're pushing the envelope. Is that right? But now, it was the home of the, the great uh, Assyrian army, which, uh, ironically, God used them against Israel many times. See, when you don't act right, uh, Tony said, you, what, what, you don't have a little act right in you or whatever it is. God, God will come see about you. Huh? But now, at this point here, God is going to chastise them. And, uh, you know, you could be so prosperous. And this got to be... You know, this city was so, so, so great that they had at least 20, the Bible said 25 watchtowers all the way around the perimeter. There were miles and miles of perimeter. And the walls were so wide on the city that two chariots could walk on, on top of the wall at one time. So this was a great city here. And a lot of times greatness uh, brings on a lot of sin, don't it? Mm, prosperity. A lot of us can't stand to be prosperous. If God blesses us a little bit, little bit. Little bit. oh, y'all don't hear me today. If God blesses us a little bit, going back over, to go back at three and look at uh, verse, let's look at verse four there. Right. Look at three and four. Now, if God blesses us a little bit, or sometimes it leads us away from God. As right. a matter of fact, what I'm saying is sometimes we can't stand to be blessed. Amen. Amen. Too much of a good thing right. takes us away from God. Is that right? Look at that fourth verse there uh, of Jonah, third chapter in, in four there. It said, and Jonah began to enter the city a day's journey. So he, uh, after he dropped him off on shore there, the fish, it took him a day to get where he had to go. Is that, is that what it says there? And he cried and said, yet for the day, he's up and down in that city now, inside, and it's all he said now, is yet for the days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. That's all. He's going up and down. He's going up and down the streets and that's all. And he's, he's, they know he's not one of them. They know that he's, he's a prophet of God and because he's prophesying that God's going to destroy this city. Look on down there now. And it says here that so the people of Nineveh believe God. Huh? They believe God. That's strange. The first time they heard the message, they believe God. Hmm? And we, and we hear it every day, and you still don't believe it. Huh? You hear it. We hear it. We got Bibles everywhere. We got Bibles all over the place. We read it. We hear it. And still, we hadn't believed it. Huh? But they believed it the first time. Look at the preparations they made after they heard it here. And the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast. Huh? Put on sackcloth. Y'all see that? From the greatest of them, even to the what? Least. Least. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose. And that, see, the people in the street got it first. Because the prophet going up and down in the street, right? So now the kingdom got it now. Huh? And the word came to the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, laid his robe from him covered him with sackcloth and he sat down in the ash pile. Huh? Leadership. Obeying God. I wish America had some people. I wish we had some leaders that'll obey God. That'll let us know that we cannot sin against God without there being some great repercussions. Huh? This leadership here. Huh? Praise God. We need leadership like that. But look what he did. Now, he sat down in ashes, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 7, he caused it to be proclaimed mm -hmm. and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and the, uh, the cabinet, the nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Don't even give your, don't you drink no water. Don't you eat no food. Don't let your dog eat. Don't let your dog drink. They taking this thing serious. 
How many of y'all see this here? Yes, Is that what it says right here? Heard not thy flock taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water, but let man and beast cover with You mean you cover up the animals with sackcloth? Yes. Huh? You, you going to make the animals mourn too? You going to make them fast? Did they take this serious? Why don't we take God's word serious? Why? They heard it just one time. You hear it every Sunday. And you're still back there talking about, well, I do what I want to do. Now, he don't, preach, preacher don't tell me what to do. Can you see the difference here? Huh? Can you see the difference? Huh? But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. It's a king now, yea. Let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell? The king said, well, perhaps, maybe, hope, hopefully, who can tell? If God will not turn and repent hmm, and turn away from his fierce angers, that we perish not. Hmm? Let us return unto the Lord. Now, this is the reaction God's look for. Mm -hmm. hmm? When God speaks to us about our sinfulness, the way we're living, the way we treat one another, when God speaks to us, God expects us to move. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How many of y'all understand that? Yes, sir. Praise God. Here's a heathen nation. Now, these are heathens. Mm -hmm. they don't, they, they, these are heathens. Hear God's word one time. one time. And look what they're doing. They're going, they're making preparations because they believe God. Well, let me tell you something. Y'all, we need to believe God. Amen. God's going to destroy. He's going to destroy all those who don't put their trust in him. Everyone, he's going to destroy America. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just like he brought us from nowhere, he's going to take America yes, out. Amen. Hmm? Oh, boy, my spirit, you know, my spirit, I, I, I know it's coming, y'all. Yeah. It's coming, y'all. It's coming. It's, oh, boy. Russia licking their chops. China licking their chops. Iran licking their chops. The Muslims licking their chops. All of them waiting on God to give them a word huh, to take America down. Huh? All of them, every last one of them. Huh? And you got to realize that God have always used heathen nations yes. to chastise his people. Yes. When God wanted to chastise his children, he always allowed other nations to come in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And while we splitting hairs and mm -hmm. worried about the eco ecology and environment and atmosphere and while we trying to worry about transgenders and Oh, boy, and all these crazy things that we're involved in today, the enemy just waiting on God to give them a word. All of them. They selling wolf tickets now, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Y'all, you keeping up with it? China selling wolf tickets. Huh? Iran selling wolf tickets. We don't let the Muslim come in and, and uh, say they're good folks and they mean well and they don't mean no well at all. Huh? We are set up. Look at your border down there. Huh? There's a story down there. That's a story there. Huh? See, when you get rid of your sovereignty, God been good to us. God, is, God was good to Israel, but yet they disobeyed God. Can you see America with that? Can you see America here? Huh? As good as God has been to us. Huh? As good as God has been to us. Huh? Yeah. I think often about how the British wanted to come over and, and gain control of this new country. We were brand new, young, had a ragtag army, just a ragtag army of volunteers. The British had a, 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 a experienced army, very experienced, more men, more ships come right here to the shore of America, going to take control of America. And God used a ragtag army. Yes, sir. Minute men, minute men, yes. beat them down, yes. ran them back across the water. Why? Because God was with America. God was with America. God is the one that brought us together here to have a religious freedom to worship God. 
God's been good to us. God was good to Israel. But Israel turned from God. And we know the story, don't we? Huh? They suffered. They're even suffering to some degree now. Hmm? America, get ready. Get ready, America. I hate it. And, and we believe it. We're going to suffer, too. Now, don't think that uh, we're going to have we're going to have we're going to suffer, too. Many of us are going to suffer because you kept quiet. All right. Hmm? All right. The Bible said, let the redeemer of the Lord say so. If you see wrong, you ought to say something. I don't care. Yeah, it don't matter to me that you ain't going to stop talking to me. It don't matter to me that you are, uh, don't want to have nothing to do with me. As long as I tell you what God says. I ain't, I ain't lonely. I got plenty of company. The Lord is my company. Yes, sir. Oh, y'all help me with this here. Yes, but the church going to suffer too. Because we have kept quiet. We see wrong. And you won't say nothing. And when you don't say nothing, when you don't address wrong, then wrong gets stronger. Am I right? When good people don't say nothing. Oh, y'all don't hear me today, do you? God's been good to America. God's been good to Israel. But here's a heathen nature, a nation that they obey God. Huh? And God spared them. God spared them. And not only that, God saved so many. I'm going to show you that God saved a whole bunch of them through their obedience, repent of their sins. Amen. Turn to the book of uh, uh, Ezekiel there. Let's go to Ezekiel there. See, God, God, God to expect to whom much is given. What is yes, what the Bible says? Has God been good to us? Come on, y'all. Help me with this here. Do you? I, I, I purposely watch TV sometime and I watch YouTube and I watch where people, you know, right today, 2020, 21, people are living in, in, in squalor conditions. I'm talking about the way people live in these other countries. I can't, it's amazing. And we living in the lap of luxury and you still ain't satisfied. You're still raising hell. Oh, y'all going to help me with this? Hmm? We still raising hell, even though, even though, what I say, what I say I want here? Ezekiel, let's look at Ezekiel 33 there. Ezekiel 33, praise God. We still not satisfied, even though, amen? amen. Even though God has been so good to us, but yet and still we are just unthankful, we are ungrateful. And I'm going to tell you something, God is tired of hearing this here. Praise God. God is tired of hearing all of this ungratefulness. 33, I said, look at 33 and look at 14. Can we look down? 33, and we're going to start looking at 14. Again, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, if he turn from his sins. Yes, sir. Y'all got that? And do that which is lawful and right. If the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he has robbed and walk in the statutes without committing iniquity, he shall surely live. He shall, shall, not, shall not die. Right. So now God wants us to repent. Huh? All through the word of God, God calling on people to repent. Amen. Amen. He's calling on us as individual yes, believers because you, you, you don't want to get involved. They call me a troublemaker because if you're wrong, I'm going to tell you what God says. Huh? But a lot of us, we like, you, 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 we want friendship with the world, but we don't want the friendship with God. You can't have them both, y'all. Huh? When you, when you see wrong, you got to say something. Am I right about that? Because we have, as a church, has sit back. All right. Hmm? And say nothing. Now look what we are now. Huh? The church is the villain now. Right. We're the problem now. That's right. We're the problem with everything going on in the world. That's right. Them folks, them old conservative religious folks, <laughs> them old holy rollers. Mm, I didn't say church folks. Now church folks ain't going to say nothing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm talking about real sanctified. Right. I'm talking about real sanctified people. Right. We're going to say it. We're going to say it in a nice way, not in a I'm better than you way. It's not like that. Right. Uh, but we're going to make corrections. But how many of us won't say, mm? right. how many won't say a thing and not, not one thing? Amen. Go to Jeremiah 18. Can you look there? Praise God. Stay with me a minute now. Jeremiah 18 there. Praise God. The word of God. God gives space to repent. Amen. 
Amen. Praise God. He wants us to repent. Amen? Amen. Look at Jeremiah 18 and we'll look at seven there. We'll look at Jeremiah 18 and seven. God gives space for repentance. Amen. Amen. But we got to follow God's lead. That's the main thing right there. Praise God. Amen. I'm looking 18, 18 and seven. Can we look at that? Uh -huh. Praise God. It says, at what instant I shall speak concerning the nation. Nation, uh, uh, America, yes, yes, uh, concerning the kingdom uh -huh. to pluck up, to pull down, to destroy it. If that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will what? Repent. Of the evil that I thought to do unto them. God said, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. In other words, God wants us. Praise God to recognize when you do wrong, you need to come to God and ask God for forgiveness. Huh? Praise God. We have to come to God and ask God for forgiveness. But we're so stout hearted today. Listen to me, y'all. America's in trouble. Yeah. We living good now. You're getting your check. Watch out. And you think we got it going on, don't we? We're close, y'all. Huh? When is God going to say it's enough? Huh? It's enough. Oh, God, they waiting on us, y'all. While we're fighting, in fighting in this country, huh? They sitting on the sideline. Hmm? Waiting on, that's all they're waiting on. Huh? God going to, he's the one that's sick them on us. God going to give them the green light. Huh? To go and strangle this nation here. Amen. How many of y'all understand that? Amen. Go to the book of Numbers now. now. Now it says here that God repents. And I want, I want to make this plain here. Uh, that, that God don't really, not in the sense that man called repentance now. Uh -huh. You know, man, it said God said, I will repent. But God don't have to repent of nothing, do he? Right. He ain't never wrong. Is that right? <laughs> Praise God. Look at Numbers, uh, Numbers 23 there. Numbers 23. Praise God. Let's look at that there. I got a new, my new Bible. I didn't bring my right Bible with me. I brought my other Bible. So it ain't all the pilot Bible. So y'all might have to give me a few minutes, okay? <laughs> Numbers 23 and 19. God is not a man. Y'all got that? God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man uh, 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 that he should what? Repent. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall it not make good, make it good? So now what I, I want to clarify because God don't make no mistakes. See, God knew that Nineveh was going to change and repent. He knew that. Praise God. But now it says he repented, but that, that don't mean to re repent in the way that we mean. How many of y'all, I, I want to clarify that just a little bit. Uh, look at Job then. Go to the book of Job 23 there. Job 23 there. I might have that already on my scripture tab here. Job 23. Let's see. Can we look at that? 23, 13. Can we look at that? Job 23, 13. God is not a man that he should repent. He don't have to repent. God knew that they were going to uh, 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 repent of their sins and he, will, he was not going to destroy that city. He knew that from the get go. God know your heart also. God know my heart. Mm -hmm. He know how stubborn we are. Yes, sir. Hmm? Yes, Some of us know we live in Rome. And you'll strut up to this table here like you're a Maltese kitten. Oh, the Maltese falcon. One of them up there. Huh? We know that we have no business coming to this table. Huh? But yet and still, we'll strut up here just like we... Hmm? Look what, what I said. Job 13? Job, uh, Job 23 there. Look at Job 23 and 13. But he is of one mind. Is that what it said about God? God's one mind? Who can turn him? What his soul desired. Even that he would. And the Bible says there's not a shadow of turning in our God. God don't change. So I just want to make that understood now. God don't have to repent. We got to repent. God don't make no mistakes. Amen. We make the mistakes. But now they repented and God rewarded them because he knew that they were going to repent. Now let's look at Matthew 12. Now this is the key scripture here for all of us today. God got Nineveh, Ninevites in heaven when we get there. Mm -hmm. huh? Every one of them got to stand before God. Some of them for judgment, some for rewards. I intend to stand to get my diploma. Amen. I want to get my diploma. Amen. I want to get my awards. Mm, I, and, and if he passing out trophies, I want to get a trophy. 
Mm -hmm. But now some of you are going to be standing for another reason. All right. Am I right? All right? Huh? To see what part of hell are you going to be in. All right. mm -hmm. that, that's, that's, that's some of us. Depend on how you live your life there. Right. What did I say? Uh, Matthew 12? Matthew 12. Praise God. Look at Matthew 12 there. And uh, let me find that scripture here. I got a few of them here. Jot it down here. Matthew 12. Praise God. Look at uh, Matthew 12. And we're going to look at, praise God. Oh, boy. I'm going to find it here in a minute here. I got it here. Matthew 12. All right. There it is. Matthew 12, 41. Matthew 12, 41. Praise God. 12, 41. Now, look at, look at this here. The men of Nineveh. Y'all got it? Uh -huh. The men of Nineveh shall rise up in judgment with this generation. Mm -hmm. Say what? Yeah. Those same people, same people that beg God not to destroy them right. and show true repentance. Mm -hmm. Some of them are going to be standing in the judgment. Amen. Looking at me and you when we come up there. Huh? The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. Why is these Ninevites, these heathen, going to condemn us? I'm church folks. I've been in church all my life. Well, being in church and being in church is two different things. A lot of folks in church every Sunday, but it's the church in you. Huh? Yes, sir. A heathen, a heathen going heathen to judge us. Uh -huh. is, is that what he said there? They shall rise up and judge and shall condemn this generation because of what? They repented at the preaching of Jonah and behold, a greater than Jonah. Say what? They listened to a ragtag preacher yes, going up and down the road screaming and hollering. Huh? And we got Jesus talking to us. Jesus is telling us to come. Jesus is the one speaking to us, and you pay him no attention. It's gonna be it's gonna be bad news. You won't listen to Jesus. They listened to a ragtag preacher and repented of their sins, and God saved many of them, and they're gonna be standing in heaven when we get there. Huh? To me, for me, for me, they're going to be congratulating and, 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 and giving, me a, uh, giving me a hand clap. What about you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What about what is going to be the response when you walk up there? Yes. Huh? And remember now, you got to stand by yourself. By yourself. By yourself. Oh, a lot of us wish the crowd can go with us. When you stand before God, when we stand before God, it's one at a time. Yes, huh? It's one at a time. In your life, your life. Hmm? Wow. A greater than Jonah, greater than Jonah. Yeah. is here. Ain't that amazing? That's amazing. Bible's everywhere. America got more Jesus than anybody. And we are the biggest hell raisers. Yes. We will not, we will not listen to the, the word of God. We're trying to find solutions to our problems everywhere. And all we got to do, Roy, is turn to Jesus Christ. Yes. That's all. Yes. But we won't turn. We won't repent. And therefore, we're ripe for a takeover here. Yes, yes, All these good things we enjoy right now. Mm -hmm. huh? If God allowed the communist, socialist, Marxist country to come in this country here, mm -hmm. they're already here. Already here. They inside. We have the Trojan horse in here now. Uh, that's why we got the factions. You got, you got the Muslims in Congress, the biggest mouths up there. Mm -hmm. huh? Yes, Muslim Jezebels, the biggest mouths up there. Mm -hmm. huh? Telling everybody else what to do. Telling the president, what, telling our president what to do. But that's what happens when you got a weak man. Oh, y'all gonna hit me with this, ain't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got a weak man in charge. Hmm? This past president had a lot of faults. And I, I, I was the first one to tell you he had a lot of faults. Didn't like, he talked too much. Big mouth. Huh? But they were scared of him. They were afraid of him. Huh? When your enemy is afraid of you, yes, sir. Yes, sir. they'll stand back off you. Am I right about that? Huh? When they're afraid of you, they'll stand back off you. But if they're not afraid of you, when they smell weakness in you, oh, y'all better, you better listen to me. 
Oh, it's weakness here. They smell it. They smell the weakness. They smell the, 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 the problems we're having here in America, and they just wait on God. And that's why we got to call on the Lord, because if God give them word, yes, sir. Yes, sir. if God turn these bars loose on us in America, we don't have an army no more. Huh? Our army been depleted. They defunded the police. God gave. There's no authority, but the authority that God, 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 we got, we got to have police. We some bad folks. Hey. I was bad until God saved me. And I know it's some bad. Am I right about that? It's some bad. We got to have the police. What you talking about? Getting rid of the police? Well, well, the guy said, well, what you going to do? Well, when you got a man in the street and he's acting up like that, no, we don't want the police to go there no more and, 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 and deal with it. Let the social worker go. Mm. Baby, cool down, baby. <laughs> <laughs> baby. <laughs> that ain't going to work, y'all. Do y'all understand human nature? Do, you know, do we understand that? Huh? Praise God. We're right. We're right for the takeover. <laughs> Praise God. See, um, uh, America, America is like Nineveh, except that Nineveh heard the voice of God. Yes, and Nineveh tur turned away. Yes, Nineveh got down on their knees, yes, basically, and they begged God. Yes, huh? Yes, sir. Are we too proud to beg? Yes, I'm not, Milk. No, I'm not too proud to beg. Yes, right. huh? But America. Huh? Have they called for uh, 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 everybody in America to get on their knees and pray? Have they called for uh, go back to the Bible? You heard anything about the Bible? You heard anything about Jesus Christ? You heard anything up there? No. 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 You're not going to hear anything. But God is looking. God is looking. God is waiting. Huh? God invested in America. God invested. We came here. We came here for religious leaders. Now, yes, slavery was a bad thing, y'all. That was the bad spot on America. But they came here for the right reason, to serve God. Not according to what the Pope says and all the rest of them over there said, but to have liberty and freedom. Now they're trying to take our freedom from us here in America. They, they're taking our freedom. Do y'all remember? I brought this up in the blog. Do y'all remember? Professor, don't y'all remember? I used to enjoy the mo houses and all the cottages debating each other. Amen. I used to love that. Amen. Opposing views. Right. Right. But now you ain't got no. no. <laughs> you can't think different no more. No. You got to think like everybody else. Amen. That's, right. That's not freedom. That's not freedom of liberty. That's not liberty. That's not freedom of conscience. No. Huh? They taking that away from us. Well, the state said you got to do it my way. Forget about what your God say. Talk about how your God leading you. I don't want to hear that. The state said I don't want to hear no about that. But God is looking though. Oh, y'all better listen to me. Oh, we enjoying things now. Sit up in our nice homes. I sit up on my patio last night. Damn, me and Doris sit on the patio. And I said, Lord, I'm, I'm living good. I'm doing good. I'm just, just sitting back here relaxing. Just, having a, just, just sitting there sipping on tea. <laughs> Played a little music on my, on my, on my box. Amen. But y'all know these days are coming to an end. Coming to an end. Coming to an end. If we don't repent, John. Right. How many of y'all hear me today? Go to First Samuel. Come on, stay with me. Go stay with me a minute. Huh? America, wicked. We, we more wicked than none of us. America is more wicked than none of us was. Praise God. Immoral. Endorsing homosexuality. Making me pay for your transgender. You beside you wake up and be a boy. And you want an operation and you're going to make me pay for it. Even though I don't believe in it. Oh boy. Hmm? What's up with that? Go make people. And we know it's wrong. But the country is going to make us. Oh, we close, y'all. Listen to me now. We close. We closer than you think. 
What I say we're looking at here. First Samuel 14. Let's look at that. First Samuel 14. Now they repented. Is that what it says? They repented and God, look what, what God do. Praise God. God spared them. God will spare America. God will spare us. Praise God. But we got to repent. The first Samuel, what I said, 14. Let's look at 14. First Samuel 14 there. Praise God. God will spare us. But we got to obey God. Amen. We got to do what God say do. Look at uh, 1 Samuel 14 and 6. 14 and 6. And I thought about this scripture when the guy kept, told me, he said, uh, man, we got the strongest army in the world. Ain't nobody going to dare try to attack us. Hmm? Well, what did uh, what, what, what it says here? What did uh, uh, jo Jonathan or uh, Joe Nathan, uh, uh, David's little uh, son, I mean, uh, uh, friend. What did he say here in verse six, uh, 14, six? Y'all got it? And Joe Nathan said to the young man that bare his armor, come, let us go over unto the garrison of these uncircumcised people. It may be perhaps that the Lord will work for us, for there are no restraints to the Lord. To save by many or by what? You, you mean it, numbers don't mean nothing to God? Huh? God can work with a few? Huh? America, say, okay, America got a great army. God said, I'll take a small army. And they're coming here? Huh? Many or few. With God, it don't make no difference. So don't depend on our armies, don't depend on our ships. Don't depend on none of that. Cause when God get ready to invade a country, yes, sir. Going down. Yes, sir. Milton, didn't he one time put a whole army to sleep? Sure did. Uh, Dr. Matt. <laughs> God put a whole army to sleep and allowed his people to go in and just wipe them out. And then we ain't got to go too far because we showed up sleeping already. The things that we're worried about ain't about nothing today. Huh? The things that we are, have brought to the... Oh, God. Help. Lord, got, Lord got to help us, y'all. <laughs> Praise God. Go down to... Uh, go, go to Genesis 15 then. Stay with me now. See, we got all these countries, Iran and all the rest of them. They waiting. Iran is selling wolf tickets and, oh, boy, we're going to do this to America. We're going to do this to America. Mm -hmm. See, but now if America was standing with God... All right. If we were standing with God, they wouldn't be selling all them wolf tickets. Uh, they wouldn't be bragging. Uh, they wouldn't be bragging what they're going to do to us. But they know that we have turned away from our God. Our protection. They know that. What I say, y'all? Genesis what? 15, 16. Genesis 15 and 16. Look at that now. Praise God. God going to use a bad nations, a bad nations uh, to come in and clean our clock. Y'all look at 15 and 16, 15 and 16. But in the fourth generation, y'all got that? Fourth generation, they shall come hither again for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet what? Ooh. Ooh. God said, hold off. Uh, they ain't ripe yet. Oh, I'm going to clean the clock. All right. Huh? Is America, is America right yet? Are we ripe for a takeover? Amen. Are we really ripe in our defiance against the almighty God? Amen. What else do we need to do? We done kicked him out of schools. Mm -hmm. We can't say the prayers no more. Mm -hmm. We can't put the commandments can't be in the, in, the, in the White House no more. What else? What else? How close are we? Are we ripe yet? Are we ripe yet for the pickings? God to let somebody come in and change. Oh, God. And we living good now. And we got a beautiful place over there. You don't have that if they come in, man. If the communists come in, Herbie, you might not have to get rid of that truck, boy. Huh? How many of y'all understand what I'm saying? Huh? If God allowed them to come in and destroy, they come in to destroy us. Huh? Oh, boy. Do y'all hear me today? Go to Deuteronomy 28 now. Deuteronomy 28 now. Praise God. God have always used nations to come in and to chastise his people. I mean, heathen nations. And these are heathens. China is a heathen nation. Huh? North Korea is a heathen nation. Iran is a heathen nation. The Muslims are heathens. Huh? All of them. All of them. 
Deuteronomy, what did I say, 28? Look at 47, 28, 47 there. 28 and 47. Deuteronomy now, 28 and 47. Because thou service, y'all got that? Because thou service, not the Lord thy God with joyfulness, ain't, ain't satisfied, ain't thankful, ain't thankful. And with gladness of heart, because you don't do that, for the abundance of all these things I've given you. Y'all see it? Therefore thou shalt serve thine enemies. You didn't appreciate me. I bless you. You don't thank me. You don't praise me. Huh? You don't want to talk about me. You don't read my word. Well, I'll let you serve your enemies. That's the way God do things. He always has all down through the Bible. When his people turn against him, he said, I'll let you serve your enemies. Babylon, did they go into Babylon? Was it that 70 years? Daniel, all of them were in there serving somebody else, right? Why? Disobedient. You think America is too good? You think God, you think this God, this is God's country here. Huh? It's God's country. God brought some men together. They put a constitution. And they said these, these guys, a lot of them weren't believers. They said, we don't, we're not believers like you guys. A lot of them statesmen. But they said, but we believe this Bible is a good foundation okay. to build a nation on. That's what they said. They agreed that and they, 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 they modeled the Constitution after the word of God. Amen. That's what they did. Amen. But now they want to get rid of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. huh? You got a people in this country right here. Mm -hmm. No Constitution. Huh? No law. No law. They, want, they want to get rid of all of it. And the church be quiet. Right. Yo, we just sit there. I'm not quiet, y'all, now. I'm, uh, most, people, most people don't like me at all. Because some of you don't like me. Because <laughs> it don't bother me, though. As long as I'm telling you the truth, though. Yes, See, a lot of we, we like to be, we want to be liked. We want everybody to like us and lift us up. But when you tell the truth, Roy, the people ain't going to like you when you tell the truth. Therefore, we keep quiet, don't we? And when good men do nothing. Hmm? Did I finish that? What was I reading there? Deuteronomy what? Look at 48. He said, therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall sin against thee. Y'all see that? You will hunger. You will thirst. You're going to be naked in want of everything. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck until he has destroyed you. That word is alive today, y'all. That ain't no fairy tale. We're in jeopardy right now. Right this second, right now. America. Because church folks. Hmm? Now, true believers, we're going to say something. Amen. You can't stop a true believer. I'm talking about a true believer. They're going to call us agitators. We're agitators. But church folks, nice church folks, will see wrong and say nothing. Right. Right. Hmm? That's right, Pastor. We all going to have to suffer, though, Herbert. Amen. That's why I try to tell people, yes, it's going to happen. If America don't repent... If we don't turn and come back to the Lord, it's inevitable. It's inevitable. A young country, the greatest country, come out of nowhere to be the greatest, the richest, the most prosperous, but they left their God. That's our epithet right there. They left their God. I hope it's not too late. I hope it's not too late. Ah, oh boy. Give me Deuteronomy 32. Come on, a few more scriptures, y'all. Can I come on? De Deuteronomy 32 there. Let's, let's look at Deuteronomy 32 there. Praise God. I hope it's not too late for America. Praise God. But we got to turn. Is that right? We got to turn and we got to repent. We, oh, come, let us return to the Lord. Oh, come, let us return. Oh, America has got to repent. Church folks got to repent. Huh? You that, uh, you know, you, 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 you trying to straddle the fence. You're living for the Lord and living for the devil at the same time. Amen. 32 and 15. Got it? 
Huh? It said, but Jeshurun waxed fat. We're talking about America here. We got fat here. Kicked. And thou art waxing fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God. Oh boy, which made him and lightly esteemed the rock. Anybody know who that rock is? That rock is Jesus. Huh? But you can get so prosperous. Oh, we done got fat. Living good. Three bathrooms. I got three bathrooms in my house. I don't know which one to go in. Hills and hoods and baths if theirs come over. I, I, I'm, I'm enjoying this, y'all. I don't want things to change. I don't want to change. I don't want to see God come in and, and, and rip us apart here. But if we keep on keeping quiet, if the church, if we don't stand up and say something, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, a boy want me to call her her. No, no, no. No, no. It ain't going to happen. I'm not politically correct. Uh, but the church didn't fall into this trap. All right. All right. Hmm? It's sad, y'all. I'm concerned, y'all. I want, I want to keep on enjoying the good life. But God's going to come, y'all. I don't know when. I don't know the hour. But I know that as much uh, when we continue to turn from God like we're doing today, yeah. foolishness. That's right. Amen. Foolishness. Yeah. That's right. Phew. Word. Killing babies and making me pay for the abortion. Right. Right. You're going to make me pay right. out of my money, tax money, for somebody else's abortion. I don't believe in it. Y'all better watch it. Better watch it. The blood of them babies crying out from the ground. God hear the cries of those kids. America is an abortion factory. Uh, we're murderers. America are murderers. And God ain't going to stand for it. Y'all better hear me. You better hear me. You better prepare yourself and do what you can. We need to personally repent of our own iniquities. See, it starts right here with us. You get you right, and then we can start working on the rest of them. Amen? But we got to do something, though. I said, I said, Lord, how long I'm going to be enjoying? How long I'm going to be able to lay back on my chase lounge on my patio like this here? Watch the tomatoes grow on the vine out there. I, I, how long, Lord? How long is I'm going to be able to do this? Because I feel it in my spirit. See, what God had done in the past, he keep on doing the same thing. Huh? Especially when he invested so much in us. America, we, we become the greatest country in a few hundred years. Them other countries have been countries for thousands of years, but we passed them though. Why? Because the God. Uh, God on our side. Is that right? Amen. That makes the difference. Amen. Praise God. A few more scriptures now. Go to uh, Isaiah 6 here, y'all. Isaiah 6. But now what we got to do is what? The same thing that uh, 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 Nineveh did. First, they humbled themselves, didn't they? Amen. Huh? Amen. We got to humble ourselves, first of all. Is that right? Yes, Amen. See, America is proud, though. Yes, Trying to solve all these problems and ain't saying nothing about God. The presidents ain't saying nothing. The congressmen ain't saying nothing. Trying to solve problems and God ain't involved. Amen. Is that foolishness? Is that foolishness? You trying to solve problems and don't include the creator. Hmm? We got to humble ourselves. Amen. And then we got to pray. Praise God. That's what they went in sackcloth. They started praying, didn't they? Yeah. Praise God. And then they turned, they changed their ways, their sin. They stopped living the bad life. Amen. If my people that are called by my name, what you do first? Humble. Give me that second one. Seek my faith and that pray. And then you turn, stop sinning, stop living like a hairy cat. Then strutting up here. Living like I had a cat, didn't come up to the table there. I've seen them over the years, the bootleggers. Right up here at the table there. I watched them there for years. And see, the kids know everything going in the neighborhood. 
We know that Sister Esther sell that bootleg whiskey over there. But that she is. Oh, oh, oh. Huh? He's just like, just like, y'all understand what I'm saying. See, we got to stop playing with God. Uh, turn. We got to humble ourselves. We got to pray, seek God's faith, and turn from our wicked ways. And God said, I'll heal you. Huh? Oh, praise God. We got to turn. Am I right about that? Well, I said, Isaiah, did I say Isaiah? Look at Isaiah 6. Here. Stay with me a minute now. We're going to go to the table here in just a few minutes here. Isaiah and the, the sixth chapter. Praise God. Sixth chapter of the book of Isaiah. Praise God. We're looking at verse number. We're going to look at one there. Come on. Let's, let's, look, let's start at one there. Read just a few of those verses there. In the year of King Uz, I died. Isaiah said, I saw the Lord. Is that what he said? Sitting up on his throne, high and lifted up, train filled the temple. See, we're in the presence of God this morning. Amen. Huh? This is not, a, a, this is not a, just a routine. We are in God's presence this morning. Look what it says. Above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With twain, he covered his face. Twain, he covered his feet. That's, that's humility before God. Is that right? Twain, he did fly. And, and, and one cried unto another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Hmm? And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, woe is me. Me. It starts with you. Me, me, woe is me. I am a man. I am a woman. I am a boy a with unclean lips. Huh? We got to first of all repent ourselves. Huh? I'm in the midst of a people. Is that what he said over there? Do you realize that we in the midst of people that also have unclean lips? Sinful people. Huh? But we have to repent first, Miss Ann. It starts with us. Individually turning back to God. Huh? So God can bless us. Amen. Praise God. It starts right there. A few more scriptures, y'all. Can I look at a few more? Can we go to, uh, praise God. Let's look at Isaiah. Go to Isaiah 5 then. Let's, 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 let's stay right there and, and see can we go a little bit further. Isaiah, and we're looking at 5 there. Isaiah 5. Praise God. I think I got that one here on my little tablet here. Isaiah 5 and 4. Can we say that? 5 and 4. What could have done? What could I have done? Is that, is that where we're at? God, this is a question that God asks us, America here. What could have been done more to my vineyard than that I have not done? That's right. Wherefore, when I looked that it should have brought forth grapes, what did God see? Wild grapes. What God, what more, how much more blessing could God have given America? Amen. Huh? This is country. He raised us up. Right. But he looked for results. Yes, sir. And we slapped him. That's right. He looked for gratefulness. Mm -hmm. And we slapped him. That's right. We told him we don't need you no more. We threw at you, God. We threw at you, God. Huh? We're a train wreck. We're an accident going to happen. Amen. Right this very second. It's just a matter of when, Lord. When, Lord. But you better get prepared. Amen. We better get prepared, y'all. Huh? Amen. Oh, it's going to be a different story. Mm, it's going to be a different. What more could I have done? What about Isaiah uh, 1 and 15? Let's look at that. Isaiah 1 15. Come on. I'm just about through now. Don't worry about it. I love you, Miss Pat. Boy, I got somebody back there. Somebody back there love the word of God. Amen. Praise God. Isaiah. And we're looking at uh, 1 and 15. Can we look at that? And when you spread forth your hands. I had a person get mad at me a long time ago. And I told him, I said, well, God don't want to hear nothing you got to say until you accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Amen. And that person been mad at me ever since. I mean, all these years, still mad at me. God don't want to hear nothing you say. Huh? Let's look at it then. Can we look at it? When you spread forth your hands, I'll hide my eyes. From you, yay. When you make many prayers, I will not heal you. Your hands are full. Is that what he said? 
Your hands are full of blood. Of blood. Yeah. The babies. Just think about the babies, though. Mm. How many millions of babies been aborted in this country with the blessing of the government? Mm. No, I, I, I won't stand with no government that's for abortion. I don't care who it is. My mama ran for office and she was pro-abortion. Ain't no way in the world. Because I'm for God. Amen. How many of y'all understand that? Huh? Full of blood. Even David. Listen to Listen now. David wanted to build a temple for God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And God told him, no, you can't, uh-uh, not no place. You can't, be in, you can't come in my presence like that. Why, 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 Lord, can't I come in your presence? What did God tell him, Mill? Blood. Too, much blood. too much blood on your hand. Uh, you a man of war. You don't kill too many people, David. I do love you, but now a temple, that's too close to me. I don't want you to have nothing to do with that. Huh? America got blood on the hand. We're ripe for the takeover, y'all. Look at the unrest inside of here. Look at the unrest. Yes, it is. Black people mad. Yes, there have been some problems. We know, yeah, yeah. There, there, there's, there's prejudice here and prejudice there. We understand that. But overall, all right. Overall, brother, you live in a nice house. I know your house. You're gonna have to get that up. Or bring twin us in there with you. <laughs> you may get the closet if it's a walk in. How many of y'all understand what we're saying? Huh? God has been good to us. Huh? But yet, in still, look how, well, look what we have done to God in this nation here. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Whew. Jeremiah said, I'm just about through. I got about two or three more. Can y'all, somebody said, preach, preacher. Preach, preach. I love it. I love it. I love it when we got people that love the word of God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, boy. Jeremiah 7, y'all. Let's look at Jeremiah 7 there. Oh, praise God. God is good. Jeremiah 7. Jeremiah 7. Jeremiah 7. Praise God. Uh, we think we can hide behind the, the church and hide behind going to church. I go to church. It ain't enough to just go to church. It ain't enough to say you've been baptized. Right. It ain't enough to say you take the Lord's Supper. Right. Huh? A lot of folks do that. The devil folks do that all the time. All the time. Because they have no respect for this table here. Right. Hmm? But I respect this table. Yeah. I respect this table. What I say? Jeremiah, look at, one, look at seven and four. Trust ye not in lying words. Saying the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. Hmm? Oh, but they got a nice building. They put trust in that building. How I many know a building don't make a church? I never forget when we first started this uh, ministry here, and I had some new people come in. And a little girl said, "Little girl looked up and said, that ain't no church." She had a mouth stuck out. That ain't no church. The church ain't no building. But these people were hiding behind that beautiful building. Oh, they put so much effort on the, and then on that ark. They took the ark everywhere they went. They, they, they thought they, 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 people think the church is a good luck charm, a rabbit's foot. All I got to do is go to church and I'm going to be all right. All I got to do is take the Lord's table and I'm going to be all right. Israel said, all we got to do is take the ark with us in every battle and we're going to win. God let them, God let them take that thing away from them, didn't he? <laughs> they went in there waving that ark and, hey, we're going to win. Oh, God sent them packing and took it. They took it home and took it with them, didn't they? Oh, you can't trust in no material things. Oh, God, y'all don't hear me, do you? The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. It said, for if you thoroughly, verse 5 now, uh -huh. are me in your ways. And your doings. And your doings. Huh? If you thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor. If you oppress not the stranger, uh -huh. the fatherless, the widow, shed not innocent blood in, in this in this place, neither walk after what other gods to your herd. Then will I cause you to dwell in this place, right. in the land that I give to your father forever, ever. Behold, you trust in the lying word that cannot what? 
Just because you go to church. A lot of people think they're going to go to heaven because you go to church. All right. That's what they thought. Mm -hmm. The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. God let them tow that temple down, didn't he? Mm -hmm. See, when you put trust in builders and material All things, right. you make them out of your God, your idol God. They become idol gods to you. Right. Huh? I love my wife, right. hmm? but I don't put her before God. Right. I don't put nobody before God. Right. Am I right about that? Well, you putting them in jeopardy because God gonna move somebody. Somebody got to move. When King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. God had to move the king for, before his prophet could see the light. Hmm? Oh boy, a few more scriptures. Come on now, stay with me. I'm gonna I'm give you Isaiah 10. Go to Isaiah 10 now. Praise God, Isaiah 10. See, the church ain't no rabbit foot, y'all. Ain't no good luck charm just cause you come to church here. You got to have something on the inside of you. You got to be born again. You got to be saved by the power of God. Amen. Oh, yes, sir. That's, that's a, we, 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 we worship God anyway, Mr. Tramiel. Am, am I right about that? I don't have to be in no nice pews to worship God. Honey, I'll get my praise on anywhere. Huh? Praise God. A lot of them don't feel holy unless they're looking at the things, saying Michelangelo's pictures up there. Y'all help me with this here. What I say, Isaiah 10? Come on, just about through now. Praise God, just about through. Yeah, boy. God is good, amen? amen. Isaiah 10, and we're going to look at, uh, let's look at verse 5 there. Verse 5. Can we look at 5? Amen. Isaiah 10, and I'm going to start at 5 there. The old Assyrians, now watch it now. We wind it up now, we wind up. Who are the Assyrians? Wow. These are these are the heathens, the Ninevite people. Okay, well, let's, well, let's, let's see what it says here then. It says here, oh, well, let me find where I'm at now. Let me get back where I'm at. <laughs> Ten and five, I'm on the other side. Oh, Syrian, the rod of my, what God called him, a rod? A rod. You are my rod. You're the rod of my anger. You the staff in their hand is mine, and the staff in their hand is mine what? So God going to work through somebody else? That's right. Is that what he's saying? Look what he said. And I will send him against an hypocritical. I'm going to send the Assyrians against a hypocritical nation. And against the people of my wrath will I give him charge and take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like the mire in the street. Howbeit he mean it not so, neither doth his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and cut off nations, not a few. Now go on down to uh, 15. Go on down to 15 now. God said you're going to use them, right? Shall the axe boast itself against him? Y'all got that? Now they're axe. God said, I'm, you want to be my axe. Right. I'm going to use you to chop down some people that done got high minded right. and think they don't need me no more. Huh? But now shall the axe boast itself against him that he it therewith? Or against him that shake it in? In other words, I don't want y'all to think y'all doing this now. Right. I'm going to use you to whoop my folks, but now don't you think? <laughs> listen to that, God. Y'all listen. Listen to that. Listen to that. As if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up, or as the staff should lift up itself, as if it were no wood. In other words, God said, realize now, I'm, you, I'm using you. All right. You my axe. All right. You my staff right now. You my rod right now. Yeah. I'm going to use you to punish my people. That's where America is right now. Amen. They waiting on us, y'all. Russia. Hmm? Iran. China. China. They waiting on it, y'all. All they need is a word from God. Huh? Look at that. Uh, uh, back up and get 12 there. Back up and get 12. I think I need a little bit of that 12 there. A little bit of 12. Wherefore, when it come to pass. I think that's what it was. Yeah. Wherefore, when it come to pass to uh, that when the Lord hath performed his whole work upon Mount Zion in Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit. What? Of the stout hearts. Of the king of what? And the glory of his what? You mean you're going to call me to whoop them, then you're going to beat me down when I get through whooping them. <laughs> you're going to use me to punish your folks, yeah. and when I get through, you're going to kill me. God use who he want to use. God use whatever he want to use. 
Huh? That's right. God said, I'm going to use you, but now don't think I ain't going to take care of you. I'm going to let you do my dirty work, China. I'm going to let you do my dirty work, Russia. But now when you get through whooping my folks, I'm going to whoop you. Oh, boy. Mm. Last scripture. Can we get a last one? Maybe two more. Ezekiel, y'all. <laughs> no more than two more, y'all. Is God good, though? Amen. America. America is in trouble. Amen. We enjoying the good life right now. I know you. We getting them checked. Don't you, don't you know them checks can be cut off? That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. A lot of us live off them Social Security checks. All right. All right. Suppose they cut them off, all of them. Come on, y'all. Let's get real now. If they cut them off in America, if our financial system is take a hit and no more checks. Well, pastor, I tell you what I'll do, pastor. I, I, I go and get my gun. You ain't got no gun. They took them. You know that, don't you? <laughs> you they going to take your guns. They going to take all your guns. You can't defend yourself. See, that's one of the reasons why our country is afraid of us, because everybody got a gun. But these other countries, they everybody got no gun. But see, they're going to be shot at from everywhere. But if they take all your guns, which is what they're trying to do. Oh, Pastor, it couldn't be that bad. Pastor, you, you paint the picture, Pastor, too bad, nine, Ezekiel nine. You paint the picture a little bad, uh, Pastor. It, ain't, it couldn't really be that bad, could it, Pastor? Huh? Nine and four, and the Lord said unto him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the forehead of the men that sigh. Listen now. And that cry for all the abominations that are done in the midst thereof. Put a mark on them, God says. The one that sees what's happening. And they repent. They sigh. It's a, see, I see what's happening. It bothers me. I'm upset, y'all. Huh? That sighs for the abomination. Huh? I see what America is doing, and it bothers me. Some of you don't even bother you. You don't even think about it, do you? Huh? God said, put a mark on that man. Put a mark on the one that sees what's happening. Huh? And they're praying about it. They're calling out to God. God, give America another chance. Lord, give America. Lord, don't destroy America because of a lot of church folks that sit around and won't say nothing. Amen. Don't want to get involved. Don't want to get involved. Don't want to get involved. I don't see how a saved person cannot, person cannot be involved. How can you say you saved and don't say a word. See people destroying themselves. And you won't, you ain't got to dump on, but you can be nice. That's not, baby, that's not the way to do it. God don't want you to do it that way. We can be nice when we say it. But some of you want friends, don't you? You love friends more than you love God. Somebody said God's for friends, stick it closer than a brother. Huh? If I got God on my side, if I got God on my side, whoo, the song said, I don't need nobody else. Last scripture, and we're going to go to the table. Hebrews 10, Hebrews 10, come let us return unto the Lord. That's God's word today. Come let us return unto the Lord. He has smitten me, but he'll heal you. How many of God's a healer? Uh, yes, he have hit you a good lick. See, when you don't do right, God will let trouble come in your life. But I thank God he can heal us, though. Uh, if he hurt you, he can heal you. But we got to turn, though. Hmm? We got to turn and come back to the Lord. Last scripture, Hebrews 10, and we're looking at 26 there. Hebrews 10, and we're looking at 26. For if we sin willfully... After that, we have received the knowledge of the truth that remained no more sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful looking for of what? Judge. Judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour God's adversary. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians in our Bibles. Praise God. 1 Corinthians, we're going to prepare for the table. But God is calling for repentance today. Repentance from us as individuals.